Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Americans could be one step closer to getting those stimulus checks. The House expected to take up Biden's rescue package in just a few hours. I'm Rena Roy in New York, and I'll have the latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it feels like a start to a summer day. We are looking at 64 degrees right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is March 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a great week so far. I don't know about you guys, but I keep having the urge to reach for an umbrella just in case. <laughs> it kind of feels that way. Is that unfounded, Mike Oster Hey, or is my instinct to, right? Today, well, over the next couple of days, yes, your instincts are, are correct. So eventually we'll a, I'm right. Yeah, eventually you're, you're right. So eventually, you know, blind pig gets a truffle too. So anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> We, we don't have any uh, any showers showing up. There may be a little bit of mist out there this morning. We're not going to be dealing with fog because of the wind, and it is definitely windy. It is very warm. It is very humid, like Steph said. Uh, welcome to kind of a summer morning. We're at 64 right now, low 60s in the hill country. This is almost 15 degrees above normal right now, and wind is out of the south to southeast, about 10, 15 miles per hour, and then we have gusts on top of that. It's been gusting um, close to 30 miles per hour, and that's going to be the situation pretty much all day long. So all that does is just pump in all this humidity and a lot of times when it hits the escarpment it kind of it kind of squeezes it out a little bit if you will so that's why we might see a little bit of mist out there on some of the roads this morning now over the next couple of days Mm, umbrella is a little bit better, uh, better idea. Mold, hackberry, mulberry, just about everything that grows out there, it seems like, is uh, getting some pollen going there. It's a grocery list of every, at least everything's on the low side. 75 at noon, going for 80 for a high temperature today. Again, south to southeasterly wind, 10, 20 miles per hour gusting from there throughout the day. A little bit better chance of rain tomorrow, Friday, and then especially over the weekend. So keep your fingers crossed. This is looking like a good shot at some rain, and another front's going to move on through here to get rid of some of this humidity and finally get us back to March weather late in the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. You got a calm start to things, I hope? No, not ah. today, actually. Mike, we have a pretty uh, serious uh, crash, actually, on the northwest side. This is I-10 uh, between uh, De Zavala and Hausman Road. Uh, the eastbound lanes are closed here, and you have to get off onto Hausman there if you're traveling uh, toward downtown San Antonio. I understand that two people uh, were actually killed uh, in this crash a, a couple of hours ago, and crews are still on the scene, and that's accounting for that closure there. So again, I-10 around the Hausman Road area uh, closed right now. The eastbound lanes closed, and we'll have more on that throughout the morning. Uh, looking elsewhere here, just looking at how that's impacting your travel time, up to 26 minutes from Bernie uh, to downtown, accounting for uh, that detour. And then once inside 1604, 14 minutes, 12 minutes uh, the other way, that will probably continue to build here as we go through the morning. Also still have this construction overnight on I-10 West. The main lanes closed between uh, military and 151 till about 5 o'clock. And here's a look at other parts of the region on Transguide 35 at O'Connor. Traffic flowing well this morning. Of course, we'll have more on that I-10 crash coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. It's back to 100% open here in Texas. That's right. Governor Abbott uh, said that the state's businesses would fully reopen today and masks would no longer be mandatory, a move that has been widely criticized. Our Stephen Cavazos joins us live downtown as millions of Texans get ready to ease those restrictions. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, it has been eight months since the governor said that masks would be mandatory across Texas counties, but today that choice is back in the hands of Texans, a controversial call that has many bracing for the unexpected. Now, shortly after that announcement was made, Mayor Ron Nierenberg tweeted in part, quote, openings, everything inside into 100%, that is, while simultaneously nixing our state's mask mandate is a huge mistake, end quote. Meanwhile, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf told Case that he thought the reversal was a, quote, big mistake. Now, last week, the governor said the increase in vaccinations and decline in COVID-19 hospitalizations are the reason restrictions were actually rolling back. Now, coming up later this morning on GMSA, we're going to be taking a closer look at the governor's new executive order and what it means for you at home and whether or not you should have that mask handy before walking out the door. That's coming up later this morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie.
Thank you, Stephen. Now to the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nierenberg announced 171 new cases and six new deaths. Meanwhile, hospital numbers continue to look better. There are 262 hospitalized with 120 in the ICU and 76 on ventilators. The mayor noting this is the lowest number of hospitalization we have seen since November. The U.S. House is expected to take on the COVID-19 relief bill today, planning a final vote later this morning. And the fight to vaccinate Americans continues as more states lift COVID-19 restrictions despite warnings from health officials. ABC's Rena Roy has more. As millions wait to get their shots in the fight against COVID-19, they're also anxiously awaiting the next round of stimulus checks. The House planning their final vote on President Biden's $1.9 trillion relief package later this morning. It is so exciting, as you know, because of what it does. Vaccines in the arms of the American people, money in their pockets, children safely in school, workers safely back to work. The White House says a family of four making under $150,000 a year is going to get a $5,600 stimulus check, plus $2,600 from the child tax credit, a total of $8,200 per family. Meantime, a major milestone in this pandemic, more people have been fully vaccinated here in the U.S. than infected with the virus. The CDC says about 10% of the U.S. adult population has gotten both shots. The agency issuing new guidelines saying fully vaccinated people can gather in small groups indoors without wearing masks. A big relief, absolutely. But health officials are urging Americans not to let their guard down. Wyoming is now the sixth state to lift its mask mandate, joining 11 other states with no face covering requirements. Two more also planning to ease restrictions next month. Overnight, the state of Texas reopening this neighborhood filled with people, some with masks, some without. But some business owners are keeping their own mask rules in place with the statewide one now gone. Before you enter that establishment, you need to know what's expected as a guest. You need to follow those guidelines. And back to the relief bill, President Biden is expected to sign it by the end of this week. And he says from there, checks could start going out this month. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And you can join us on March 16th next week for KSET's second Parenting in a Pandemic live stream special. You can watch it online on our mobile news app or our free streaming app that works with Roku and other smart TV devices. Our Myra Arthur will be the host and will be joined by a panel of professionals who are also parents to tackle some important issues like mental health and addiction to technology. You can join the conversation and share your biggest questions and concerns by sending in your questions right now on our website at KSAT.com. Right now it's 437. We're at 64 degrees. And coming up last year, the BAFTA Awards faced a backlash after some say its nominees were not diverse enough. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at who's nominated this year in its most diverse list ever. 2020 put a halt on travel for most of us. That means you might be left with travel credits. Still ahead, what to do, uh, what to, do to keep that money from or credits from expiring. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's a good morning to you and a good morning to humidity. We're definitely going to see that today, but when will we see rain? We're going to check in with Mike later on. In your other morning headlines, of a dozen Republican state attorneys general have filed a lawsuit over President Joe Biden's executive order on climate change. The suit challenges Biden's authority over, quote, massive expansion of federal regulations through executive order. Among other things, it provides for the publishing of the, quote, social costs of greenhouse gases. The lawsuit argues the administration cited no statutory authorization to create the interagency group that will assess the cost. The lawsuit essentially claims this sort of power should be exercised through legislative action by Congress and can result in a massive increase in regulations in multiple industries. China and Russia plan to build a joint lunar space station. Both countries signed a memorandum of understanding on Tuesday. China National Space Administration said in a statement the nations will use their accumulated experience in space science, research and development to jointly develop a roadmap for the construction of an international lunar scientific research station. The statement added the lunar station will be, quote, open to all countries and international partners who are interested, end quote. Right now it's 42 minutes past the hour, about 64 degrees. Airline vouchers, you might have received one after canceling your trip last year. Coming up next, why you might want to get them 
them out even if you're not planning a trip anytime soon. The major U.S. airlines asking the administration to develop temporary credentials that show travelers have been tested and vaccinated for COVID-19. That's next in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the push to create vaccine passports. U.S. Airlines asking the White House to develop federal guidance for temporary health credentials that would help keep track of travelers' negative COVID tests and proof of vaccination. It's really just using your phone in, in a way that we hope will simplify things for the government and for the passengers. While the airlines do not want vaccines mandated for travel, they hope the digital health pass will allow people to avoid domestic and international quarantine requirements. I know the state of Hawaii is considering just that. Um, if you're able to show you have uh, the test and the vaccine, they're going to eliminate the quarantine. And so we definitely think that is one of the main benefits. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll show you how other countries are already using this vaccine passport technology. With your GME First Look, I'm Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. Well, it's been a year since the lockdowns began. A lot of people had to cancel flights and vacation plans. That likely means you might be left holding travel credits that could be on the verge of expiring. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on what to do to keep that money from flying away. Her bags are packed and Lisa Kopecky is very ready for takeoff. And I'm going to New York to see um, a little work trip and to see my daughter and grandbabies. And I am about to do backflips with excitement all the way to check in. Overpacking as always. <laughs> she had to cancel her flight a year ago. Now she's cashing in her airline credits. The airlines have been mostly generous handling cancellations, giving out vouchers for future travel. But now many of those are expiring. So what do you do if you're still not ready to travel? My biggest and best piece of advice is to read the fine print. Travel industry expert Scott Kai says travel vouchers vary wildly, even within the same airline. So look for three things on your voucher. First, that expiration date. Does the expiration date refer to when you have to travel by or just when you have to book your flight by? Next, what can you use it for? Any destination, any passenger? And third, Kai says look for the customer service phone number. The airlines are actually being far more flexible and accommodating than their reputation is, but you have to give them a call and ask for your voucher to be extended. And not wait, he says, to see if an airline unilaterally extends deadlines and get it in writing to be sure your money isn't the only thing scheduled for departure. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, earlier this morning, there were two people killed in an accident up on I-10 near Houseman Boulevard on the northwest side. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King about that accident. Uh, Mark and Stephanie here can take a look here. This is the best view from the uh, Transguide cameras uh, of the scene. This is from UTSA Boulevard, a little north of there, uh, looking south. And you can see those uh, lanes, those eastbound lanes uh, are shut down. You can still see the crews on uh, the scene there. Again, this is looking uh, south from uh, UTSA Boulevard, but you can uh, definitely see the activity. The scene remains active there, so that's accounting for that closure uh, of the eastbound lanes there on uh, I-10. So you will have to likely get off on the frontage roads and get off on Hausman there and then navigate around and then uh, get back on at uh, De Zavala for because that closure extends from Hausman to uh, De Zavala right now. So that's something we'll keep following uh, throughout the morning and we'll have another update here coming up at the top of the hour on that. I still have this construction uh, reported until the top of the hour at uh, on 410 uh, between military and 151. So look out for that. Also, uh, some delays near the uh, I-10 East and uh, Loop 410 on the east side. Again, uh, so six minutes if you're traveling uh, westbound into downtown from 410, five minutes the other way. Again, it's a early hour, but once again, we do have some construction in that area to look out for, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Yesterday during GMSA, the fog got progressively worse. Today. Looks like a better view this morning, Mike. Yeah, we got a lot of wind out there, so you usually don't get fog when you have winds that are gusting close to 30 miles per hour at all. And so that's one of a, our kind of our salvation. But that just continues to pump in all this moisture, which eventually is going to lead to a couple of little sprinkly showers. You know, they'll be surprised if there's a speck of mist out there or something like that this morning, but uh, we're not seeing anything on radar. Once we get into the next uh, 
couple of days. Then you may see a few little uh, showers around here. Here's the dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. And, you know, when we have these numbers, think back with the winter storm that we had, these numbers were down in single digits, bone dry air. But when you get it close to 60, which it is at Randolph and 62 in Helotus, you feel the humidity when you step outside. And again, it's because of these winds coming in here out of the southeast pumping all that moisture on in here and there's going to be enough of it, especially by like I said tomorrow and Friday. We'll have a little uh, just streamer showers as we call it just because that moisture is coming on in the atmosphere really can't hold it. And so you get these little sprinkles that are coming on in here. Some mist uh, again is possible this morning. So here's the computer model. I think this does a fantastic job just showing that. Well, first of all, lots of clouds around today. You know, a peak of sunshine or two is possible. Here's some of those streamer showers that this model is picking up in the morning hours tomorrow and then basically just cloudy skies throughout the day. We're going to be staying 80 today and the next couple of days as well. Friday about the same situation. I think maybe a little bit better chance to see a couple of showers around here on Friday. Then we get into the weekend and that's when rain chances are definitely going to, uh, to pick up. So we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. You see the upper level winds flowing in from the uh, west to southwest and still being pulled in around this big low up to the, the north of us. And this is what's going to be pulling a front through here on probably late Saturday is when it really start to affect our weather ahead of that. We get a little bit better chance of rain on Saturday. Then as the front really approaches, it may actually scare up a couple of uh, pretty good thunderstorms around here late Saturday into the first portion of the day on Sunday. Then all that's going to be moving on out of here and we'll get rid of some of the humidity and it's going to be a nice afternoon on Sunday. And of course, get an extra hour to uh, enjoy some of that uh, the clearing skies and that drier air Sunday late in the day. 75 degrees today at noon. Cloudy, very breezy wind again out of the uh, south southeast about 10 20 miles per hour gusting from there throughout the day and then 80 for a high temperature today. Again, some mist is possible this morning, not very likely tomorrow. A couple of sprinkly showers around the area. Very, very warm start 10 15 degrees above normal up to 80. Just about the same thing on Friday, slightly better chance for some rain better still on Saturday and overnight then into Sunday with those showers, even a couple of thunderstorms and temperatures. We go from 66 for a low Saturday morning, 53. So drier air starts to come on in here and then 72 for a high temperature and more sunshine. Nice, pleasant, coolish morning actually down a little bit below normal by Monday morning. All that vegetation that took a hit last month in the winter storms, if it survived, it really could use a drink. Yes, uh, trying to come back. Mm -hmm. Our Again, best chance of rain and it's still it, what's nice is the computer models have all been very consistent and mm -hmm. still holding that in there for the weekend. That's yep. always a good sign. We need it. Thank you, Mike. Time now is 452 and about 64 degrees right now. Two women nominated for a Director's Guild Award for the first time ever after the break. The nominees for the top prize. And they sometimes call you Nomads. Nomadland director Chloe Zhao making history. She's the first woman of color nominated for best director by the Directors Guild for a DGA award. Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? The DGA also nominating promising young woman's Emerald Fennell. First time the DGA has nominated two women for its top well, prize. Doc. The picks give us a good idea of which directors might be up for an Oscar when the nominees are revealed next Monday. And the nominations for supporting actress are. The nods come on the heels of the yeah, BAFTA nomination, seen nominations. as the British equivalent of the Oscars. Last year, the awards caught up in a BAFTA so white controversy. This year, the most diverse list ever with Daniel Kaluuya, Dominique Fishback, Chadwick Boseman, Leslie Odom Jr., several cast members from Minari and more getting nods. 21 of the 24 acting slots filled by first time nominees and a record shattering four of the six directing nods went to women. It's a great sign for the movie business. Movie theaters in Los Angeles could open up again starting March 19th, a year after they closed because of the pandemic. The County Tuesday moved to a less restrictive tier, which would allow theaters to reopen with limited capacity. Less than half the theaters in North America are currently open. And happy birthday to a madman. Actor John Hamm is 50, while actress and director Olivia Wilde is 37. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's about four minutes till we're running about 64 degrees and still ahead on GMSA T-Mobile getting a new privacy policy. Why the company will start sharing your browsing information with advertisers. Well, that's great news. Uh, experts <laughs> say you want to reconsider certain money rules that you may have followed in the past. Why experts are suggesting you should not invest money until you're debt free. 
It's back to business for Texas and the choice to wear a mask now up to you at home. Coming up later this morning on GMSA, we take a closer look at the governor's new executive order and what it means for you. Outside with live cam, it's breezy and mild this morning. Can you believe it? We're running about the mid 60s hours before the sun even comes up. Significantly warmer. It is. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday, March 10th. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you've had a great week so far. Some people have just because they're sleeping in because it's spring break. That's right. Do we need the umbrella? Yeah, my co-host, Sir Hage, is that, or is that more of a weekend requirement? Uh, starting tomorrow is not a bad idea, and especially on Friday, and then, yeah, over the weekend. But uh, as you notice, the, the picture behind stuff there, it is not anywhere near as kind of, uh, kind of fuzzy looking as what it was yesterday. We don't have any fog to deal with. A lot of humidity, though, but winds, that's the big story this morning, as well as temperatures and humidity 64 degrees about 15 degrees above normal wind out of the south at 15 miles per hour has been gusting from there and look at that bottom number dew point of 58 that's getting up there you really notice it when you uh, step outside we are going to make it up to 80 today roughly uh, 10 degrees or so above normal and as far as the aquifer boy it could use a big old drink it dropped down uh, four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens there is just a grocery list of them out there at least everything's on the low side and no oak showing up for now. All right, here's what the winds are doing out of the south, and that just continues pumping all this humidity around here. About um, 10, 15, close to 20 miles per hour. Then the gusts on top of that. This early in the morning, we're seeing wind gusts, uh, 26 at the airport, 25 Stinson, 22 up the road, Bernie Stage, as well as Randolph and Castroville. And we've actually just in the past half hour seen gusts approaching 30 miles per hour, and it's going to stay windy throughout the day. So warm, humid, windy this morning. Uh, maybe a speck of mist out there. Don't be surprised if you see it or a couple little uh, specks on your, your windshield. Cloudy, windy, very warm today, up close to 80. About the same thing tomorrow, except uh, a few of these little sprinkly showers are better chance tomorrow morning and then even better chance for that on uh, Friday weekend. A good shot at showers, even a few thunderstorms uh, throughout the day on Saturday and especially Saturday night and the first part of the day on Sunday. Then the front's going to move on through here, and so that'll clear us out and get rid of some of this humidity. So keep your fingers crossed, though, for the rain this weekend. Uh, more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, big news out there. What's the latest, Samuel? Yeah, we do uh, have uh, some incidents this morning, but we're going to start with the traffic times across uh, the region. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels. A few delays on I-10 east of town, so it's causing that travel time from Seguin up to 31 minutes, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, and 27 minutes right now from Bernie, and we have some issues here on I-10. We had a fatal crash overnight at Hausman. The eastbound lanes have been closed uh, for a while. We have a crew on the scene. Our Katrina Weber is out there live this morning, and Katrina, what can you uh, tell us about uh, this situation right now? Well, good morning, Sam. Uh, the highway just opened up. In fact, while Mike was doing this weather, we saw the first cars start to head uh, on the main lanes of the highway. It was a fatal crash. Two men in their 20s killed, according to San Antonio police. I want to give you a look at the video. This happened about 2 o'clock this morning. According to police, those two men were in a car heading on Hausman Road. They were heading north toward the highway here on Hausman for some reason, they did not make the turn onto the access road because Hausman dead ends at the highway. They launched onto the highway in the eastbound lanes where their car hit the median. Uh, those two men in that car were killed. No other vehicles involved. Uh, police did have this highway shut down, but again, just within the last minutes, uh, we did see them tow away the car that was involved, and then we saw the, uh, the traffic resume on the main lanes of the highway. So things are clear now. But again, two men in their 20s dead as a result of a crash early this morning. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you. Be safe out there. Today, Texas fully reopens and the mask mandate is finally lifted. Governor Greg Abbott issued the new executive order last week. The governor citing an increase in vaccinations and a decline in COVID-19 hospitalization rates as a reason for the rollback. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with what you should know about the order. Stephen, good morning. 
Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic created limitations for communities everywhere, but here in Texas, it is back to business. And starting today, those limitations have become a thing of the past. Now, all businesses and establishments will be now allowed to operate at 100% capacity, and the state will not impose people to wear face coverings. However, places like federal property, city-owned spaces, Public transportation and public schools are not required to lift the mask mandate. However, according to Executive Order GA34, if COVID-19 hospitalizations rise for about 15 percent for seven consecutive days for any hospital region, county judges can opt to invoke strict COVID-19 guidelines, but they cannot impose face restrictions or fines. Now, the governor instead leaving it up to Texans to make that choice. Now, although there are limitations for city leaders or local leaders, that is not wearing a mask or refusing to wear one could still cost you big bucks and even possible jail time. We're breaking that down coming up later this morning on GS GMSA. But for now, reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. This is a story we are following closely. Look for the latest throughout the day in our newscast. You can also find more information on our website on kset.com. Just look for these stories on our homepage. Health professionals are asking people not to be discouraged from getting the COVID-19 vaccine because of others shaming them. This comes as people from here in San Antonio are speaking out about a backlash they're receiving because they fall into particular health risk categories for things like obesity. Sarah Lloyd spoke out against being shamed for getting a vaccine because she falls into that obese category. She says it qualified her to get the vaccine before others, and at first she felt guilty, but later realized she was protecting herself and those around her. Health professionals say others with invisible illnesses who qualify are also being shamed. They're encouraging people to work together without passing judgment. Our mission as humans is to push back against shame and anxiety, especially when something is important, as important as our health. We're all really kind of links in the same chain. So anytime you can make that chain a little bit healthier, I think is going to be a good thing. Health professionals even here in San Antonio believe a reason shaming is taking place is due to, due to the limited number of vaccines and the difficult process to get it. They say even though the process may seem frustrating, people should remain patient. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. More traffic authority coverage now as a vote is expected today in the U.S. House on President Biden's stimulus plan. Leaders already turning to another top administration priority, infrastructure and transportation. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, a new survey outlined some priorities here and across the country. Yeah, and a key familiar name to many people in our region is actually behind uh, this survey. A former San Antonio mayor and uh, U.S. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Henry Cisneros, as well as the Kinder Institute over at Rice University in Houston, they looked at infrastructure priorities in 100 metropolitan areas in 134 cities across the country. And San Antonio leaders told them that one key priority is expanding and improving the transit system via Metropolitan Transit will benefit from a reallocation of local sales taxes beginning in 2026, but will still likely need federal funding to help pay for an advanced transit system. Cisneros tells me expanding transit would reduce congestion and give people other options to get around the region as everything grows here. He says the pandemic also exposed the need for better transit options for essential workers. They had to be there and we just didn't have the, the route system. Uh, we need to upgrade the equipment. We need to put in some more uh, rapid routes, what they call advanced rapid transit. And Cisnero says road improvements are also a key priority, at least in the short term. The major I-35 project also on the local list of infrastructure priorities. And it's not just roads and bridges. The, it, the local leaders also listed the airport, Port SA on their wish list, as well as investments in CPS and SAWS facilities. Cisnero says the winter storm showed just how dependent we are on infrastructure and the problems that are caused when it fails. Mark and Stephanie. We appreciate the extra coverage. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you. Well, the All-Star break is over. Our Spurs back on the court tonight for the shortened second half of the season. The Silver and Black play in Dallas at 730. AT&T Center will welcome fans back to the game starting this Friday. And as always, go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. A busy schedule. Yeah, I think Greg Simmons said last night they've got like 40 games over the next 60 days. Yeah, some to make up for lost games, I think. And a rush to the playoffs. Yes.
<laughs> go Spurs go. Time now is 509 and 64 degrees for now. Just ahead, are you still following the same old money rules? If so, experts say you may want to think twice what you need to know about money rules you can forget about this year. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's humid out there, but Mike says maybe you don't need that umbrella today. Maybe tomorrow. We'll check in with him in a minute. And welcome back. It's about 512. Everyone can agree that 2020 was a year like no other. It changed the way Americans handled so many areas of life, including the way they managed their money. Well, now some of those classic finance rules you've heard of your whole life no longer apply. Max Massey explains. 2020 turned everything upside down, especially people's finances. I mean, I was out of work the entire time. I had to adjust my spending. Experts say you want to reconsider certain money rules that you've heard in the past. The pandemic, again, I think is going to make everybody think that they've got to really have their finances in order, particularly to have some, some cash on hand. The first rule you can throw out, having a three-month emergency fund. The new target for most households is at least six months worth of expenses and more like 12 months if you're self-employed. Maxing out your retirement contributions is another rule you should forget. You shouldn't sacrifice your ability to afford essentials, only contribute what your company matches. Also, pay down high interest debt first. Paying with cash only is another money tip you don't have to follow. Some credit card perks can help you save money and protect your purchases. And you may have been told to check your credit score once a year. Experts say you might want to look at that monthly. The major credit bureaus are offering free weekly reports through April of 2021. You may have also heard you shouldn't invest money until you're debt free. Now experts suggest continuing your debt payments, but setting money aside for investments if you can afford them. Max Massey. Case at 12 News. Well, that's interesting. There are quite a few things in there that we just flip everything sideways on, you know, <laughs> things that we've been told for a long, long time. Right. We've, we've had to adjust for a, a lot of things, things overall. Things have changed <laughs> yes, for sure. They have. Time now, 514 and 64 degrees for now. Researchers at the University of Washington have developed a way to turn on your smart speaker and uh, turn it into a heart rate monitor. Details next here on Morning Tech Bites. So ashamed I overpaid for this used car if decided to go undercover. Guess I picked the wrong used car site. Remember, if you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on a used car again. Hey, Bob. Oh, my. Hey, Beth. How we feeling? Good. Yep. Moving. Moving. Shop millions of great deals, all with a free Carfax report. Only at the all-new Carfax.com. Don't settle for products that give you a sort of white smile. Try new Crest Whitening Emulsions for 100% whiter teeth. It's highly active peroxide droplets. Swipe on in seconds. Better. Faster. 100% whiter teeth. CrestWhiteSmile.com I'm made to move. But these days, I'm not getting out as much as I'd like to. That's why I take OsteoBiflex. It helps with occasional joint stiffness while it nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. OsteoBiflex, because I'm made to move. In today's Tech Vice, new technology to detect heart problems. Researchers at the University of Washington have come up with a way to use smart speakers to diagnose abnormal heartbeats. They use the microphones and the devices to analyze signals coming off someone's body. T-Mobile plans to start collecting and sharing customer information with advertisers, including browsing data and app usage. The new privacy policy, which also applies to Sprint customers, allows advertisers to show you more targeted ads. It goes into effect next month, but customers can opt out. Finally, a drone capturing the inner workings of a bowling alley. The drone's pilot shows off some incredible control, sending the drone in some very tight spaces. It was done at an alley in Minneapolis. The whole thing ends with the drone's view of a strike. Pretty cool. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. A well, double fatality accident's been tying up things on the northwest side early this morning. Our Samuel King has been tracking this accident all morning. What is the latest? Stephanie and Mark, this is a look at UTS uh, from UTSA Boulevard, and you can see 
uh, within the past uh, 20 minutes or so that those lanes uh, have uh, reopened the eastbound lanes on I-10. So traffic uh, is moving there. And Mike's been talking about the, the wind there. You can see the camera moving around a little bit as well. So here's a look at that on the map. We expect this to come off here shortly. Uh, all green on both sides after that crash. We'll have uh, more on what happened there throughout the morning. Uh, otherwise, looking across the area, we have a new crash. This is on I-10 on uh, far east side out near the county line here. This is on the eastbound, reported as an eastbound ramp to FM 1518. There's also some uh, been some construction in that area, of course, so watch out for that if you're uh, heading in eastbound. Also on uh, 35 near New Braunfels, we have a stalled vehicle heading northbound at Morningside Drive to uh, watch out for. So looking at, at 35 and I-10 from Seguin and New Braunfels, still around the normal time, 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels to downtown, 31 minutes, a little higher than normal from Seguin, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Yeah, we'll watch out for that. Um, a little humid. <laughs> I can oh, tell the difference yeah. today. <laughs> and she's being nice. It's a lot <laughs> humid out there, and it's going to get more humid the next couple of days, though. At least that humidity is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain once we uh, especially go in toward the weekend. Right now, um, and as Sam pointed out, the winds are just shaking everything up. Two hands on the steering wheel this morning because we've got uh, winds that are gusting, have been gusting close to 30 miles per hour. Temperatures, the normal low, 30-year average low temperature is 50, so we're almost 15 above. Above that, so welcome to uh, kind of mid spring morning and yeah, that humidity out there. Thanks to these winds, which are coming on out of the uh, south to southeast, gusting about 25 again, close to 30 miles per hour. It's going to stay fairly windy all day long. There's no rain out there this morning. Uh, but there may be just a speck of mist. Now, as that humidity continues to get pumped on in here over the next couple of days, that may lead to what we kind of call streamer showers. Just it's just so much of this moisture kind of coming on in here. These little uh, sprinkly showers that may be the situation tomorrow morning. Slightly better chance by Friday morning. Also notice, though, as the uh, humidity stays up there in the mid 60s, you're going to start to definitely feel it. And then by late Saturday, early Sunday morning, this just drops off like a rock. So Sunday afternoon is going to be very pleasant. We'll uh, clear on out of here and then notice how the humidity comes right back up pretty quickly by the middle part of next week. But as this front moves through, that's what's going to be uh, it's running into that humid air. And that's what's going to be triggering potential uh, thunderstorms around here late Saturday overnight into the first portion of the day on Sunday. So this morning, and today, just lots of clouds out there. And then again, by tomorrow morning, these would just be some of those streamer showers depicted on this computer model and cloudy skies throughout the day. Same thing on Friday, perhaps a little bit better chance for a sprinkle or two on Friday. And then we get into Saturday, and that's going to be a better chance for some rain. And then especially late in the day as the front approaches here, and that would be overnight then into Sunday morning. Even a couple of uh, a couple of decent thunderstorms can't be ruled out overnight uh, Saturday night into early. Early Sunday morning, then all that's going to get pushed on out of here and we will start to see uh, things clear on out then by Sunday afternoon and Monday back to normal temperatures kind of coolish actually Monday morning today 75 degrees at noon cloudy again it is going to be let's call it breezy or windy however you want to describe it 80 for a high temperature so roughly 10 degrees above normal same thing tomorrow a couple of those little streamer showers in the morning same thing Friday and then we go into uh, the weekend and uh, showers thunderstorms around on Saturday Best chance is going to be overnight into Sunday, the first part of the day, Sunday, and then we'll clear out later on in the day. More normal next Yes, week. more normal. Nor 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 yes, that too, what you say. <laughs> thank, thank you, Easy Mike. For me today. <laughs> 523, about 64 degrees. And just ahead, Avatar tries to take back the global box office record. a serious struggle for some students and it's not just the reading writing and math it's the rejection i'm sarah costa coming up tomorrow on gmsa how you can help your socially isolated child find a circle of friends outstanding according to multiple reports avatar is reopening in china this weekend it needs about $7.4 million to take back the all-time global box office mark from Avengers Endgame. Both films have made just under $2.8 billion, and due to mergers, both are now owned by Disney. What's my name?
Sorry, maybe that one's too hard. Two increasingly familiar names are on this year's list of Directors Guild of America feature film nominees, Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman and Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. It's the first time the DGA has nominated two women in the same year for its top prize, and Zhao is the first woman of color nominated in the category. Stars in flame. You've never played with a sparkler? Nope. Run! You've got to run with me! Come on! Here's a look at the romance Long Weekend, starring Finn Whitrock and Zoe Chow as a couple who fall quickly in love, though both have secrets that could either ruin their relationship or make it stronger. Long Weekend opens in theaters Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And back here in San Antonio, it's 527, about 64 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. Restrictions are easing across the state today as Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order kicks in. Coming up this morning on GMSA, we take a closer look at whether or not you should have that mask handy before walking out the door. And checking the road to a trans guide, and here is the good news. I-10 has fully reopened out there by uh, Houseman and UTSA Boulevard after two people were killed in a really bad accident in the early morning hours. Hi, welcome back. It's 5.30 and it is Wednesday, March 10th. Feeling more like a summer primer out there this morning with temperatures in the mid-60s. Here's Mike with more on that and any potential fog today. No, uh, we're not going to be dealing with fog today because we've got the wind out there and you usually need to just basically calm air or a very, very light wind to get some fog. But no, winds are uh, just really kind of shaking things up. Literally, signs are moving around to keep two hands on the, uh, the steering wheel. And so as you can see, visibility looks pretty good. Obviously, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here and we're not going to see an overabundance really of sunshine until probably Sunday afternoon. 64 degrees, we're almost 15 degrees above normal right now. The dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere, is way, way up there. We're flirting right around 60 in many spots, which means you feel the humidity when you step outside, and that wind, sustained wind out of the south at roughly 15 miles per hour. And even out in toward the hill country, we've got temperatures that are well up into the upper 50s and low 60s as of right now. Sustained winds, 15, 20 miles per hour approximately, and then gusts on top of that, 26 here here in town 25 at Stinson. We've already seen gusts uh, close to 30 miles per hour so far this morning, and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of today. Temperature is going to make it up to 75 at noon, 80 for a high later on this afternoon. And again, very breezy. Uh, if you see a speck of mist this morning, don't be surprised by that. Slightly better rain chance for a little sprinkle tomorrow morning. A little bit better Friday, better rain chances still this weekend. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. What's the latest, sir? Well, things uh, clearing up here on uh, I-10, and we'll show you uh, that in, in a moment. We did uh, just a few moments ago have a rollover reported here, uh, I-10 and far east uh, Bear County here, close to the county line, but you can see here it is clear and traffic is uh, flowing once again, looking at the travel time. So we're up to, uh, down to 29 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10, 26 minutes into downtown from New Braunfels, 25 minutes uh, from Bernie. Of course, all morning we've been telling you about uh, this crash here overnight, a fatal crash, uh, I-10 uh, between UTSA and Houseman Road. Our Katrina Reber is live on the scene and Katrina, we understand reopen within the past half hour or so. Well, that is right. You know, judging by the highway, it's almost like nothing happened here, but that isn't the case. Police tell us that two men in their 20s were killed in that crash early this morning. Apparently, they came up Hausman Road heading east toward I-10, and instead of turning on this access road, they flew right onto the highway, according to police. Uh, we were out here a little bit after 2 o'clock when this happened, and we have some video to show you. Uh, again, police say that those uh, two men missed the turn onto the access road, launched onto the highway where they hit the median. Both those men in that car were killed. Police do believe that speed was a factor in this case. They, they think that car was speeding. Now they say it's lucky that uh, that car was not hit by any others on the highway when it got onto those main lanes. So only that car involved and again, we did see that car being towed off when we got here a little bit before five o'clock this morning. Uh, police did clear the highway and then it reopened just within the ha last half hour. So far, no names have been released of those two men who died. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Katrina. It's back to business for Texas today as the state fully reopens. Governor Greg Abbott easing up on other COVID restrictions, issuing an executive order that removes the statewide mask mandate. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning. Stephen, how lax should people be about this rollback? Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, that will ultimately be up to them. Now, starting today, as you mentioned, businesses will be back operating at 100% capacity, and masks, instead of being mandatory, is now a choice. However, refusing to wear a mask could still land you in hot water. Now, businesses do have the right to require employees and customers to still wear masks while on their property. Refusing to comply with businesses' mask requirement could lead to criminal trespassing charges and a possible misdemeanor offense. That is a possible misdemeanor offense. Now, that is punishment with jail time. Now, although that choice will be up to each individual, local leaders will not be allowed to impose any restrictions that conflict with the governor's current executive order. Now, again, that kicks in today. However, on Monday, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez did note that he believes most people will comply with what businesses have in place. However, he still encourages business owners to call police if someone refuses to comply with those orders or refuses to leave. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. In your morning headlines, jury selection opens its second day today in the trial of a former Minneapolis police officer charged in George Floyd's death last May. Several potential jurors were dismissed on Tuesday, including some who said they wouldn't be able to set aside their strong views about the case. Jury selection is proceeding even as a potential appellate court ruling could halt that trial. Derek Shelvin faces second degree murder and manslaughter charges. Well, this morning, the House is likely to pass a $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. The White House says stimulus checks will start arriving this month with electronic payments hitting bank accounts first. As CNN's Britt Conway reports, Democrats are making one final push to let people know there's more to the legislation than stimulus checks. Yes, the checks should arrive soon. First, the House has to pass the COVID-19 relief bill. Then it heads to President Joe Biden's desk, and he has promised to sign it. And Democrats are promising there's more to this bill than payments. During a visit to a D.C. hardware store, the president talked to people there about helping small businesses. 400,000 small businesses went out of business. Yeah. They got in line, but they couldn't get the help. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we found out that an awful lot of that went to big, bigger businesses. And the Treasury Secretary pointed out there's help coming to cities and states, too. During the Great Recession, when cities and states were facing similar revenue shortfalls, the federal government didn't provide enough aid to close the gap. There are other elements of the bill Democrats say will help close a number of gaps created during this pandemic. So people won't see a break in their unemployment benefits. And then the child tax credit will take a little bit longer. Vaccine distribution will get the injection that it needs immediately. Of course, not everyone's happy the relief package is so broad and expensive. It's likely to pass without Republican support, as it did in the Senate. If it's focused on pushing more of the far left agenda. But supporters believe it'll be the boost the economy needs. If we do our job, I'm confident that Americans will make it to the other side of this pandemic. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said it's looking to partner with Dollar General stores in an effort to accelerate the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine in rural areas of the United States. Talks come amid concern that rural Americans who don't have access to big box stores won't get vaccinated. Dollar General is now one of the largest retailers in the country with more than 16,000 locations. That's three times the number of locations of Walmart and more than half as many as CVS and Walgreens. Dollar General recently announced it would give staff members four hours of pay to get vaccinated. And now to a recall alert you should know about. Kia is issuing a recall for nearly 380,000 SUVs and sedans that could be at risk for catching fire. This applies to many sportages made between 2017 and 2021 and cadenzas made between 2017 and 2019. There is a risk that some of the electronics under the hood could short circuit resulting in overheating and a fire. Until the problem is fixed, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recommends parking the Kias outside and away from structures to prevent any possible car fire from spreading. Kia will notify the owners of affected vehicles by mail beginning April 30th. The automaker says customers will not be charged for those repairs. 
538, about 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, tips on how to make the most out of the food in your pantry, how storage plays a big role, and how long your food will last. It's about time to spring clean, but instead of uh, trashing your unwanted items, why not try to sell them? We have some top tips on how to get a pretty penny for things that you don't want. I know some people who make a lot of money doing that. Doing? Reselling their items. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's something to be said about that. Uh, taking a look outside with live cam, it's 64 degrees right now, a little humid, but you may not need that umbrella today. We'll check in with Mike later on. And welcome back, it's 541. CDs, designer handbags, sports memorabilia, even your wedding dress, anything can be sold online and it doesn't have to be done by a major retailer. A new eBay survey reveals the average American household has about 50 unused items around the house worth more than $3. With yeah. platforms like eBay, Poshmark, and Craigslist, it's easier than ever to sell your stuff. Our Sarah Costa shows us the top tips to turn your trash into cash online. It's time to toss the old and start new for spring. But wait, before you throw out, sell it. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it online. A seller's biggest mistake, how you show it off. There's been several items that I've turned down because of the description, very vague description. Also, know which platform is the best for you to use. A heavy and hard to pack basketball hoop is ideal on Facebook Marketplace where a local can pick it up while your name brand shoes may sell for a higher price on Poshmark rather than bidding sites like eBay and Craigslist. Is image everything? Yes, 75% of online shoppers rely on product photos when deciding on a potential purchase. I bought a pair of shoes that in the picture looks black and then they turn out to be navy blue. Include several high quality pictures of the item from different angles and take them with natural light behind you, filter free in an area free of clutter and more vivid a description, the better. Be honest and you'll end up getting the most cash for your trash. Each platform also differs regarding cost. While you may earn 100% of what you get on Facebook Marketplace or Instagram, Etsy charges 20 cents for each item listed. Depop charges a 10% fee for each item you sell. Poshmark charges 20% on any item over $15 and offer up charges a minimum of $1.99 and 12.9 of the sale price. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. I guess it's 12.9% of the total sale price. Yeah, well, there's yeah. there's money to be made, but you have mm -hmm. to take the time to right. follow through with it. Yes, you do. 544, 64 degrees. And knowing how long to keep food and when to throw it out can get confusing. After the break, some tips from Consumer Reports on how storing certain items can make them stay fresh for longer. I mean, we were literally just talking about this with Mike Ostrager standing right off camera right there. Uh, knowing how long some food items last and when you should throw them out can be a little challenging. But Consumer Reports experts say following these techniques will not only make the items last longer, but save you money as well. They say dried pasta in an unopened package can be stored and used up to two years, even past its best buy date. If dried pasta is opened, it can last you up to one year. Experts say it's best to store dried pasta in airtight containers to prevent it from going stale. Next is whole grains. Experts say whole grains don't stay fresh very long due to oils that remain in the grains germ. You should store whole grains in an airtight container in a cool place and last about six months or one year in the freezer. And when it comes to olive oil, experts say a bottle can last three to five months after opening. Keeping olive oil past five months will cause it to oxidize faster. Experts say when buying an olive oil, choose packaging that blocks light and air, such as dark glass. You should throw it out if it smells like Play-Doh or oil paint. Yeah, that Play-Doh thing, that's a big, that's a big uh, giveaway there. Uh, <laughs> experts say leaving flour in the pantry attracts bugs and it won't work as well. Flour normally lasts about three months in a cool, dry place. You should tightly wrap or refrigerate refrigerate flour to increase the shelf life up to a year or store in the freezer for longer than that. And last, let's talk about bread. Experts say it's best to freeze it. Refrigerating bread can make it go bad faster. Just be sure to wrap it tightly in foil or plastic wrap and put it in a sealed container. That will keep it fresh for three months. Any questions, Mike? Well, even no. No. Well, I, the, yeah. the one line at the bottom of the previous graphic, mm -hmm. if it smells bad, throw it out. Really? Well, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not saying, except for blue cheese, you know? I mean, this, is this is true. <laughs> oh. Mike Ostrahage. 548, Samuel King is standing by with more on the roads. And uh, what's your take on that? <laughs> I think y'all got it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> As we've been saying, uh, I-10 has uh, reopened here on the northwest side following a pretty serious crash overnight. We've been following that throughout the morning, and Katrina will have another update coming up here. Looking across the area, that's really the only thing uh, left on the board. We do have some construction-related items uh, today and uh, throughout the next couple of months, actually. Oh, uh, this ramp closure, last day of this, I-10 eastbound at Dominion, uh, doing some work out there, so that ramp will be closed. So if you travel in that area, watch out for that. Meanwhile, in New Braunfels, beginning tonight, there'll be some ramp closures here between FM 1103 and FM 2252. They're re uh, sort of designing uh, the, the intersections and interchanges there. So they'll have to close the ramps uh, to uh, better navigate that. And TxDOT has some more information on that on its blog. But again, watch out for some changing traffic patterns again up here uh, just south of New Braunfels on I-35 beginning at 830. Looking at 281 right now, the travel time's looking good. Seven minutes uh, southbound and uh, Six minutes uh, northbound. Texas also says we, we we told you that the northbound main lanes have opened on Evans Road, but between Evans Road and farther north there. Uh, but the southbound lanes have not reopened from this construction project. Texas says they plan to have opened them pretty quickly, but uh, things there, there's going to be some delays there. So people have been saying the northbound lanes. You can even see it here. Uh, that travel time shorter than uh, the other way. They they're enjoying the northbound lanes being completed, but again the southbound lanes. It's going to be just a little bit longer. So TxDOT is asking for patience, guys. All right. Uh, Mike's got a pet for us to talk about at an yes. event that's got a fantastic name. I like big mutts and I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And that pretty much says it all. Yeah, these pets need homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Two-year-old terrier pit bull mix. Look at uh, her name is Tristan. She's just sweet and beautiful. Look at the smile. It's just like play with me, love me. Take all me she's home. Aww. Cutest. Ear. I'm sticking your tongue out at you, so that's not very polite, sweetie. She loves to explore. <laughs> it's still a cute. Last one thing, keep your towel handy. She's going to get smothered in smooches. Yeah, with that tongue hanging out there. This week, San Antonio Humane Society is going to be having a big event. Mark, it is called the... I like big mutts and I can't <laughs> Adoption special. <laughs> going to run until March 14th. All large breed dogs have a $25 adoption fee, excluding ambassador dogs. For more information, sahumane.org slash adopt. A lot of dogs and cats over there. So head on over and you can uh, check it out again on their uh, website as well. Let me go back over to where I was because that's where I'm going to be doing weather here. Nice little stroll across the studio. Uh, Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Hi. We do have pretty good visibility out there this morning. We're not dealing with any fog or anything like that. Obviously, there's a lot of clouds in the uh, background and really the, the wind doing a couple of things. It's preventing fog from forming up. We've got wind gusts, you know, 25, close to 30 miles per hour that we had earlier this morning. But then also it continues to pump in all this moisture. We're not seeing any or haven't seen any reports of any sprinkles or mist out there. Don't be surprised if there's a little bit of mist. But as we go into Tomorrow, there may actually be uh, just a couple of these little sprinkly streamer showers, as we call them, just because all of this moisture continue continues to get pumped on in here. And you can see these dew points are going to be flirting right around 60. That's sort of that threshold when you start to feel the humidity. You know, think back a few weeks ago in that winter storm, we had such a dry air. Dew points are down in single digits and even negative numbers. But now the humidity is definitely up there and it's going to be sticking around through the day tomorrow and then going into Friday as well as Saturday. But then we have a front moving through, which will kind of get rid of that. So today, a lot of clouds around here. Uh, if there's a peak of sunshine, great, but otherwise I wouldn't count on it. And then in the overnight hours, here's some of those little streamer showers that this rapid update model is picking up. Again, it's going to be few and far between one or two little sprinkles, just enough to make the roads kind of damp tomorrow. And the same thing on Friday, although maybe a little bit better chance for a shower on Friday, then the better chance of rain is going to be coming on in here, uh, especially later in the day. We'll have some showers around Saturday, but especially overnight into Sunday. So that low, which started off in the Pacific Northwest off the, uh, the coast, 
of Oregon and uh, Washington has been just taking its time and it's digging down here. Southwesterly flow keeps the clouds around, keeps the moisture around, mild temperatures. As that approaches, uh, rain chances will definitely improve. And then early Sunday morning is when that's going to pull a front on through here. And that then is going to be clearing us out for Sunday afternoon, getting rid of the humidity. So good looking afternoon. Monday looks very nice as well. But Boy, keep your fingers crossed for some rain this weekend. 75 degrees today at noon, cloudy, breezy, and then a high temperature today up to 80 with, again, breezy condition. What are you guys doing? Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, you told us to cross your fingers. <laughs> We're listening. Okay, for once they listen. 65 <laughs> tomorrow morning, uh, 80 the next couple of days, well above normal. Chance of uh, showers, thunderstorms late Saturday and then into Sunday. You know, back to the, the foods. And I was talking about, you know, yeah. some smells throw it out. It's a blue cheese. You know where they got the name cheese from? No. Somebody left milk in a big vat one time, walked over there, lifted a lid with cheese. <laughs> and so they, it's, it's an oldie but a goodie. I entertain myself. <laughs> I was listening intently. <laughs> okay. Dad humor at its best. Mm -hmm. 554, try the cheese. <laughs> Welcome back to GMSA. Join us March 16th for KSAT second parenting in a pandemic live stream special. You can watch it online on our mobile news app or free streaming app that works with Roku and other smart TV devices. Myra Arthur is the host and will be joined by a panel of professionals who are also parents to tackle some important issues like mental health and addiction to technology. You can join the conversation and share your biggest questions and concerns by sending questions right now to KSAT.com. Well, as we wait to see if the COVID-19 stimulus bill passes in Congress, many now looking towards another priority of the administration, infrastructure. In our next half hour, Samuel King will take a look at what that could mean for us right here in Texas. And Transcud right now, 35 at Evans, more to come on GMSA. San Antonio police say speed has killed out here on this northwest side highway. Two men killed in a crash here overnight. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order kicks in today. Coming up this morning on GMSA, what it means for school districts across the state. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid start to your day at 64 degrees. And we are expecting rain, but maybe not today. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. We made it to midweek. It's Wednesday, March 10th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us this morning. And Mike says the breeze overnight has kept most of the fog away, and we are looking ahead to some much needed rainfall around here. Yeah, the, the rain chances are still looking pretty good, and that's been very consistent so far this week as far as rain chances coming in here uh, this weekend. The humidity, wow, you can just about cut it with a knife, and yes, it is very windy, and that's preventing some of the clouds out there. So visibility is good. Obviously, we do have uh, plenty of clouds in that shot, and everybody is way above normal. We're almost 15 degrees above normal here in Tanya Valley 62 66 right now in Del Rio and Carrizo Springs at 64 wind. That's the other thing you're going to notice when you step outside, not only the humidity, but winds have been uh, very breezy overnight, 15, 20 miles per hour on average right now. And then we have gusts on top of it. So it's actually gotten gustier just in about the past hour, 29 mile per hour wind gusts out there at the airport. And that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of today. And as far as temperatures, uh, you know, we're going to be staying pretty uh, steady all morning long and then you know, maybe fluctuate a degree or two, then make it up into the mid 70s today at noon and a high temperature today. We'll make it up to 80, so almost 10 degrees above normal. Same thing tomorrow, maybe a few sprinkles around the area tomorrow, Friday, but yeah, those better chances of rain over the weekend. We'll talk about that in a front moving through here later on in the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and well, I was just going to say you had that big crash earlier, and now I see another graphic popped up there. Yeah, we have one. This is this one's on the east side. We have the big crash on I-10 and we'll have more on that uh, coming up. But this one is at loop 410 here 
uh, on the east side at uh, WW White Road. Uh, but again, with it being spring break for a lot of people, we're not seeing uh, the traffic uh, as we're seeing. So this one's really uh, not impacting the roads at this point. For instance, looking here at the travel time on the east side of Loop 410, 12 minutes northbound between 37 and 35, 12 minutes going the other way. Looking at some other uh, travel times, 30 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10, 25 minutes coming in from Bernie, 16 minutes coming in from Lytle, and 29 minutes coming into downtown San Antonio from the Floresville area. Here's a look at Transguide I-10 at Hebner, uh, looking fine this morning, as well as 37 at Cesar Chavez. And we'll have another update coming up. Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. A single car crash has killed two men on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police say the one who was driving missed a turn and launched the car onto Interstate 10 near Hausman Road. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police say speed was a factor. Now, that is what they told us. That was part of their preliminary findings. Now, police did spend several hours out here investigating the crash. They had the highway shut down. Uh, quite a different scene now, but let me give you a look at things earlier in our video from this morning. Uh, about 2.15 this morning is when the crash happened. Police say that the driver was heading east on Hausman Road. Now, he got to the dead end here at uh, I-10 at the access road. Instead of turning, police say his car continued going straight ahead, launched onto I-10, hit the median, and both the driver and the passenger in that car were killed. But police say that it is lucky that no other cars on the highway came along and then hit them. Their car was the only one involved in this crash. Those two men still have not been identified just yet, uh, but we are waiting for that information and we'll pass it along as soon as we have it. I mentioned the highway had been shut down for hours, but it did reopen just before 5 o'clock this morning. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order begins today, which will allow the state to fully reopen. The executive order has also lifted the mask mandate, which was put in place by Abbott eight months ago. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning with more on this top story, the impact it will have on schools across the Lone Star State. Good morning to you, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Definitely a big talker. Now, public schools are not required to lift any mask mandate or change any of their health protocols. And while some local school districts are on spring break this week, many are already issuing the response to the governor's new executive order, which does kick in today. Now, districts like Alamo Heights ISD, Bandera ISD, and Judson ISD are just some local districts that will continue their current health protocols. Now, according to the Texas Education Agency, schools should still require masks for anyone that are over the age, uh, age of 10, but local school boards have the power to modify or eliminate that policy. Some districts like Comal County, however, are leaving the choice to wear masks up to parents and teachers. Now, the school board's district of trustees amended, uh, the district cited, the district's board of trustees, that is, amended their health and safety guidelines to allow parents and teachers to make that choice. Now, again, the governor's new order does kick in today, and schools are already issuing their responses. You can head over to our website at ksat.com to read some of those responses. But for now, reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. All right, thank you very much, Stephen. If you own a business in Texas and want more clarification on the mass mandate ending, you can participate in a statewide town hall today. The Texas Workforce Commission, Workforce rather, Commission and the Governor's Office will host the town hall at 1145 this morning. The state agencies say they want to help offer guidance through this transition. We will live stream the hour-long town hall on ksat.com. Meanwhile, local health officials are reporting 171 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They report that six more people have died from the virus. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven day moving average is now at 186 cases per day. 262 people are in the hospital due to COVID-19. Mayor says it is the lowest number of hospitalizations since November. He also says the school risk level is now at low. New this morning, Castle Hills police say one man is in custody after leading them on a chase overnight. Started just after one this morning on Jackson Keller near Loop 410. Castle Hills police say the driver took off when he saw officers nearby. That's when the driver turned down a street. Police say he crashed through a lock gate at the Elon Gardens apartment and into a parked truck. Officers say he tried to get out and run, but they tased him and arrested him.
San Antonio police say one man is in the hospital after a rollover crash just north of downtown. It happened around 2 this morning on Highway 281 near Hildebrand. Police say the driver rolled over in an SUV while on the curve under the UIW Sky Bridge. Officers say the fire department was called to pull the man out of that vehicle. They tell us he was taken to University Hospital and is expected to survive. One man's in the hospital this morning after he was hit by a car overnight. Take a look at this video from the scene. Police say it happened in the intersection of Culebra and Callahan around 1030 last night. They say the man walked into the street and the driver hit him with the car. He was taken to University Hospital with head injuries and his condition is not known at this time. Police tell us there are no charges against the driver right now. An 18 year old man has been charged with manslaughter after a deadly crash. According to an arrest affidavit, records show that Justin Ortiz caused the crash on a commercial avenue near Charmin Place and Sunglow Drive. This happened back on February 8th and you're going to look at video from the scene. San Antonio police say Ortiz was racing when he lost control and caused a crash with another driver. Now, both Ortiz and the driver of the other vehicle were taken to the hospital, but the passenger in Ortiz's truck died on the scene. Police also say that Ortiz had a suspended license at the time of that crash. More traffic authority coverage now as a vote is expected today in the U.S. House on President Biden's stimulus plan. Leaders are already turning to another top priority, improving the nation's transportation system. Our Samuel King joins us now and Samuel, a new survey outlines some top priorities here and across the country. Yeah, about infrastructure, transportation and the like. And a key familiar name is behind it to many people here in San Antonio. This study was done by the Kinder Institute for Urban Research over at Rice University in Houston in collaboration with former San Antonio mayor and U.S. HUD secretary Henry Cisneros. They looked at infrastructure priorities in 100 metropolitan areas and 134 cities across the country. And in San Antonio, leaders told them that one key priority is expanding and improving the transit system. Now, via Metropolitan Transit will benefit from a reallocation of local sales taxes beginning in 2026, but it will still lead federal funding, likely need federal funding, to help pay for an advanced transit system. Cisneros tells me expanding transit would reduce congestion and give people other options to get around as the region grows. And he says the pandemic also exposed the need for better transit options for essential workers. We can uh, move uh, essential workers who do not own a car uh, to work. That's an equity question. Uh, we can uh, get congestion off the roadways and improve people's time to work and so forth. The Cisneros says leaders also told them that road improvements are a key priority, at least in the short term. That major 35 project was one of the major projects on the local list of infrastructure priorities. Now, local leaders also listed improvements at the airport and Port Essay on their wish list, as well as new investments in CPS and SAWS facilities. Cisneros says the winter storm showed just how dependent we are on infrastructure and the problems that are caused when it fails. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Right now it is 610, about 64 degrees. The pandemic has caused many aspects of life to change. After the break, we will hear from an expert to see how managing personal finances has changed as well. Outside with live cam. Yeah, very warm start to the day, but not near as foggy as it was yesterday morning. How much will we warm up today? And will you need that umbrella all weekend long? Mike's forecast still to come. Welcome back about 614 2020 changed the way many of us handle so many areas of life that includes the way we manage our money. There are new rules on how to deal with your finances and Max Massey has better ways to manage your money so you are not reduced to counting dollar bills in a mason jar. 2020 turned everything upside down, especially people's finances. I mean, I was out of work the entire time. I had to adjust my spending. Experts say you want to reconsider certain money rules that you've heard in the past. Pandemic again, I think, is going to make everybody think that they've got to really have their finances in order, particularly to have some some cash on hand. The first rule you can throw out having a three month emergency fund. The new target for most households is at least six months worth of expenses and more like 12 months if you're self employed. Maxing out your retirement contributions is another rule you should forget. You shouldn't sacrifice your ability to afford essentials, only contribute what your company matches. Also, pay down high interest debt first. 
Paying with cash only is another money tip you don't have to follow. Some credit card perks can help you save money and protect your purchases. And you may have been told to check your credit score once a year. Experts say you might want to look at that monthly. The major credit bureaus are offering free weekly reports through April of 2021. You may have also heard you shouldn't invest money until you're debt free. Now experts suggest continuing your debt payments, but setting money aside for investments if you can afford them. Max Massey. Case at 12 News. But 616 and my money is on Samuel King. Yes, I think you're correct on that. <laughs> How are things looking now, Samuel? Well, thank you for your confidence, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, we do still have a crash here. This is on the east side, a little uh, closer to where the one we were reporting earlier. This is at Loop 410 and Seguin Road here, and there's some uh, delays around uh, 410 there, so watch out for that if you're on that side. Looking at uh, west side here, 151. Uh, normal times, 8 minutes going uh, westbound to 1604, 10 minutes eastbound from 1604 to Highway 90. Let's take a look at Transguide 410 at Jackson Keller. Traffic uh, building, but still flowing well as it is on 35 and Evans this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Very good. And a reminder that the school bus has been parked and put away for the week, right? Yep, spring break. So <laughs> we'll just have things pop out over my shoulder. Love this graphic. So nice. uh, temperatures, boy, everybody is way, way above where it should be right now. Uh, averaging mid 60s around the area and throughout the rest of today. Well, it's breezy this morning. It's going to stay very breezy throughout the to today. We've been seeing wind gusts already close to 30 miles per hour. Very warm temperatures, and that'll be the case now and today, tomorrow uh, through the first part of the weekend. And a couple little sprinkles here. Don't be surprised if you see some mist this morning. But as far as any showers, maybe tomorrow, Friday, better chance to especially later on in the weekend. And then we are going to be seeing a front move on through here, which is going to get rid of some of this humidity. Hopefully these showers this weekend help out some of these flowers. Look at that beautiful. Is that a daffodil? That is my hunch, but okay. I, nice. I'm as well versed in flowers as you are. <laughs> yeah, just a guess. Steph, it's what do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay. Yeah. Sam, you got any? Uh, Okay. Safety in numbers, people. Daffodils. <laughs> yeah, it looks looks great. We'll go with that. A <laughs> hey, uh, mold is and hackberry, mulberry, juniper, pine. Just a list of allergens out there, but everything is on the uh, the low side. And uh, as far as uh, looking outside with live cam, you can see we got lots of clouds out there. Visibility is good. We don't have the fog that uh, we had to deal with the past couple of days, just because basically of this wind. And again, winds are right now are gusting about 30 miles per hour out there at the airport. 24 New Braun fulls and 20s in parts of the hill country it stays gusty breezy all day long high temperature yesterday did make it up to 77 degrees uh, again putting in perspective the normal high is uh, right around the low 70s right now we had some uh, low and even mid 80s down there to the uh, southwest and we're going to be looking at 80s and could see a couple of this computer model has Catula at 90 degrees today, which is really not out of the question. It's very, very warm, way above normal temperatures all day long. And it's basically because of that low. That's the one which has just been sort of sitting out there in the Pacific Ocean. Started off pretty much in the Gulf of Alaska. It's been working its way slowly to the south, keeps us in this southwesterly flow keeps things warm around here, helps to pull in the humidity. A lot of that's coming. We've got moisture aloft, obviously, and the moisture uh, down here at the surface is coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And this thing, again, doesn't move all that much, so the overall weather pattern does not change the next couple of days. Uh, with the extra humidity coming in here, like I said, tomorrow maybe a little sprinkle or two in the morning. Same thing on Friday, perhaps a little bit better chance of rain. But as the low moves in here closer, we'll have a better shot of some rain on Saturday, and then especially overnight into early early Sunday morning and then on the back side of that that's going to pull a front on through here and that's what's going to touch off even a couple of thunderstorms late Saturday night into early Sunday morning that'll move on through get rid of some of the humidity temporarily but uh, again temporarily is kind of the the operative word because right on the heels of that another low is going to kind of get temperatures and the humidity helping to come back in here by about the middle part of next week so we'll just have a couple of days reprieve from some of this humidity late in the weekend starting off next week 75 degrees today at noon cloudy breezy conditions or just plain old windy 80 high temperature and tomorrow pretty much more of the same perhaps a slightly better chance for a couple of sprinkles in the morning same thing 
on Friday and then we go into Saturday, Sunday. A few showers on Saturday. I think it's going to be a wash out, but the better chance of rain will be overnight and into the first part of the day on Sunday. So if you're going to church on Sunday, um, probably need an umbrella. Also, make sure you set your clocks ahead so you're not late. That's right. You want to be on time. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. About 620, uh, 64 degrees. And the Spurs start the second half of their season tonight. After the break, we're going to hear how the team is preparing for a tough road ahead. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Wildflowers provide beautiful natural fragrances, inspiring Airwick to create our new spring collection. So we're partnering with World Wildlife Fund to reseed native wildflowers and grasslands. Learn more at airwick.us. This allergy sufferers is my favorite Zizol bedtime story. It's about the time when allergy symptoms ruined people's sleep and made them miserable all the next day. Oh, what relief they found taking Zizol at night. It worked while they slept and they woke refreshed for more productive days ahead. Zizol provides powerful relief. Plus, it lasts up to six times longer than Benadryl, works faster than Claritin, and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. So, be wise all, take Zizol. At night. You try to stay ahead of the mess, but scrubbing still takes time. Now there's Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. It's the faster way to clean as you go. Just spray, wipe, and rinse. It cleans grease five times faster. Dawn Power Wash. Spray, wipe, rinse. 624, it is game day for our San Antonio Spurs taking on their I-35 rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. The team has had nearly a week off due to the NBA All-Star break with no Spur pl Spurs players taking part. Yesterday, the Silver and Black held a practice in Dallas, and it was the first time in a couple of weeks the team was at full strength. Injuries and COVID quarantine has kept players out of action since February. In the first half of the season, the Silver and Black won 18 of 32 games. That's placed them seventh in the Western Conference. But the second half of the season expected to be tough for the Spurs. They play 40 games in 68 days because the team has to make up the postponed games from the first half. Some of the players talked about their expectations going forward and if those have changed. I'll say we were excited. We have very high expectations, you know, trying to make the playoffs day by day, um, game by game and doing the best that we can. So um, I can see everyone, you know, they're happy to be healthy, happy to, you know, get it going. And uh, I'm just excited for how, how things are going for the Spurs. We're still hungry. We still, uh, we, feel, we still feel like we got something to prove. I think uh, we're going out every day and ready to compete and win. Second, second half of the season starts tonight against the Mavs in Dallas. Tip off schedule for 7.30. You can watch it live on Fox Sports Southwest or tune in to GMSA tomorrow morning right here for what we hope is highlights. We hope. Go Spurs go. Time now, 625 and 64 degrees for now. U.S. House is expected to vote on the COVID-19 relief bill today. We'll see what the final steps are for the measure to become law. And the literacy rate for adults in San Antonio is worse than the national average. In our next half hour, we will see how one group could be creating a national standard to help adults learn to read. And outside with TransGuy, we've got heavier traffic showing up on all the major freeways around town. You're looking live at 281 in Hildebrand and I-10 at Frio. Samuel King will have an update after the break. We are waiting to learn more about two men who were killed in a crash out here on I-10, not far from UTSA's campus. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about how it happened. It's a controversial call that has many bracing for the unexpected. Today, Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order kicks in. And coming up later on GMS say it's back to business for Texas. And masks, now an option. Americans could be one step closer to getting those stimulus checks. The House expected to take up Biden's rescue package in just a few hours. I'm Rena Roy in New York, and I'll have the latest coming up. Well, I suspect it could have been another very foggy morning this morning, but the, Mike says the breeze has kept most of that away, but it's another warm day ahead. Yeah, no fog, just humidity for Lots now. Lots of humidity.
Happy Wednesday. It is March 10th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Mike. Get an update on our midweek forecast. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to stay warm and humid for the next couple of days. We made it to the upper 70s yesterday. Add to that today. And yeah, visibility is pretty good out there. But again, those winds. Wow. I mean, they've been breezy all night long. Southerly at 15. That's just these sustained winds. We've got gusts on top of that. 64 degrees right now. 58 is the uh, the dew point temperature again you get those dew points close to 60 you really start to feel it and everybody in and around town i mean very consistent temperatures with the high humidity with the cloud cover and that keeps things really really consistent and those uh, southerly breezes you know it's not it's preventing fog, but it's continuing to pump in all that uh, moisture around here. We've got those wind gusts approaching uh, 30 miles per hour here at the airport and also at the uh, Burning Stage Airport, and it's going to stay very breezy all day long. All the allergens, there's a laundry list of them out there, but uh, everything is on the low side right now. No oak is showing up yet. Warm, humid, windy, and that's going to be the case all day long. And tomorrow, more of the same situation. Maybe a uh, a uh, stray little shower in the morning, sprinkly shower in the morning, pretty much the same thing on Friday morning. Then we have a better chance of rain over the weekend, especially Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Front's going to move on through and it's going to get rid of some of this humidity and actually we will salvage the uh, latter part of the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and boy, there's a, been a lot going on. Case in point. Yeah, relative for a spring break week for many people, it has been uh, quite busy this morning. This crash is on Loop 410 on the east side at uh, Seguin Road. So crews are still uh, on the scene there. So there's some delays in and around this area to watch out for. Taking a look at the travel time. Ooh, the new crash popped up, so we'll check on that coming up. Uh, 12 minutes between 37 and uh, 35. Uh, looking at some travel times from across uh, the region. 30 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin. 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. 19 minutes on 90 from Castroville into downtown San Antonio. And here's a look at Transguide. I-10 a heat mirror traffic picking up but flowing well this morning. I have another update coming up. Mark. Yes, sir. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police say the driver of a car that crashed I-10 near Hausman overnight was speeding. Both he and another man in the car with him were killed. Katrina Weber is live on the I-10 access road. Uh, that's right around the corner from the UTSA main campus. Is it possible those two men were students, Katrina? Well, it is possible. Uh, we won't know anything for sure until those two men are identified possibly later this morning. What police have been able to tell us so far is that they both were in their 20s. Now, the car that they were in was the only one involved in the crash. It happened shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. Police say they were heading east on Hausman Road and reached the area where it dead ends into the I-10 access road. Instead of turning, though, they went straight ahead and launched onto the main lanes of the highway where they hit the median. Very fortunate that that, uh, that that vehicle didn't get, get struck by any other vehicles. Unfortunately, this is just a tragic accident. It looks like speed played a factor. Well, the highway was shut down for hours after the crash. What police investigated, traffic had to be forced onto the access road. Now, we were out here when the car was towed away uh, just before 5 o'clock this morning, and then a few minutes after that is when the highway did reopen. Right now, it looks just like a normal day, but again, two men killed here early this morning. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Mask on, mask off. It's a choice Texans will now be able to make for themselves. Today, the state fully reopens and masks will no longer be mandatory due to Governor Greg Abbott's new order. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with what you can expect to see. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. Well, it's possible you may see some faces you haven't seen in a long time with masks no longer being mandated, but instead a choice. However, the governor's move to reopen the state fully has been met with both criticism and controversy, but that's not stopping the new rule from taking effect today. Now, here's what you need to know. All businesses and establishments will now be allowed to operate at 100 percent capacity, and the state will not impose people to wear face coverings. Places like federal property, city-owned spaces, 
public transportation and public schools are not required to lift the mask mandate. According to Executive Order GA34, if COVID-19 hospitalizations do rise above 15% for seven consecutive days for any hospital region, county judges can opt to impose strict COVID-19 guidelines. However, they cannot impose mask restrictions or fines. Businesses still have the right to require employees and customers to wear masks on their property. Refusing to comply with a business mask requirement could lead to criminal trespassing charge or a misdemeanor offense that is punishable with jail time. This is a lot of information to dissect. You can read more about it by heading on over to our website at ksat.com. But for now, reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. And it's now 635. U.S. House is expected to vote on the COVID relief bill today. The final vote expected later this morning. Meanwhile, the fight to vaccinate Americans continues. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Good morning. Americans could soon be getting their stimulus checks in the mail as vaccinations also ramp up. The U.S. now averaging more than 2 million shots a day. As millions wait to get their shots in the fight against COVID-19, they're also anxiously awaiting the next round of stimulus checks. The House planning their final vote on President Biden's $1.9 trillion relief package later this morning. It is so exciting. Vaccines in the arms of the American people, money in their pockets, children safely in school, workers safely back to work. The White House says a family of four making under $150,000 a year is going to get a $5,600 stimulus check, plus $2,600 from the child tax credit, a total of $8,200 per family. Meantime, a major milestone in this pandemic. More people have been fully vaccinated here in the U.S. than infected with the virus. The CDC is issuing new guidelines saying fully vaccinated people can gather in small groups indoors without wearing masks. A big relief, absolutely. But health officials are urging Americans not to let their guard down. Wyoming is now the sixth state to lift its mask mandate, joining 11 other states with no face covering requirements. Overnight, the state of Texas reopening this neighborhood filled with people, some with masks, some without. And back to the relief bill. President Biden is expected to sign it by the end of this week. And he says from there, checks could start going out this month. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, the House has passed a pro-union bill that would block right-to-work laws around the country and generally make it easier to organize a labor union. It would also prohibit companies from hiring replacement workers during a strike. The bill now moves to the Senate, but it's likely there to have enough votes to become law. Jury selection for the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will proceed today even as a potential court ruling could halt the trial. That matter involves the state adding a third degree murder charge in the case. Several potential jurors were dismissed yesterday because they said they would not be able to set aside their strong views about the case. T-Mobile plans to start collecting and sharing customer information with advertisers, including browsing data and app usage. The new privacy policy, which also applies to Sprint customers, allows advertisers to show you more targeted ads. It goes into effect next month, but customers can opt out. Scientists say they have discovered the oldest volcanic rock ever found. They published the results in a study this week. Researchers say the rock is not from planet Earth, but was found in the Sahara Desert last spring as a meteor. Get this. Scientists say it is 4.6 billion years old. Wow. One researcher told New Scientist magazine that its age makes it older than Earth itself. And the rock was formed only about 2 million years after the formation of the solar system. Researchers say that studying the meteor could help us understand how the planets, including Earth, formed. That's mind boggling yes, on so many is. levels. Yeah. Right now, 639. We're about 64 degrees. And it's a skill that many of us take for granted after the break. Why it's never too late to learn how to read. 642, the literacy rate in San Antonio is one of the lowest in the nation for bigger cities. The San Antonio Public Library reports that a quarter of the adults in the Alamo City are functionally illiterate. That is defined as being able to read at a fifth grade level. And literacy rates are dropping around the country as well. RJ Marcus has details about a Chicago-based organization that could help provide a framework for teaching adults to read. From high employment, low wages, even poor health care. People who can't read have all kinds of troubles in life that you might not even think of. 
such as reading street signs while driving, a prescription bottle from their doctor, or even a menu at a restaurant. You can't read the menu. You don't know what you're going to get. So they just say, I'll have what that guy's having over there. Unemployment rates can be two to four times higher for those with little schooling compared to people with a bachelor's degree. I was a little afraid of taking different jobs because I didn't know how to read. That's why Joanne is part of Literacy Chicago, an organization whose mission is to empower adults through reading. I will be nine, nine years old. I will. And for adult learners wanting to learn to read, the first step is don't be ashamed. It can discourage you from even trying. To get over that hurdle, look for some support. People often need someone to tell them they can do it because their whole life they've been told they can't. Label everything in your house, and when you see a word, say it. Finally, find something you want to read, which could be comic books, subtitles on a television program, or magazines. I used to tell people, I don't care if you read Playboy, as long as you're reading. Constant practice every day brings adult learners closer to learning how to read and more opportunities. Literacy Chicago classes are free to students. It is funded through government grants and private donations. They currently have over 150 volunteers, and with COVID bringing classes online, volunteers can be anywhere. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And if you like big mutts and you cannot lie, the SA Humane Society has the event for you. Now until March 14th, the Humane Society is hosting an adoption special for large dogs. You can adopt a dog one year or older for $25. And to schedule a contact-free adoption or schedule a meet and greet, head to sahumane.org. And if you were wondering, there is no special discount if you sing the song. But can't hurt, right? Probably one of the best. Uh, event titles in the history of ever. <laughs> and look at the picture. I mean, <laughs> oh, I just realized. That's that, so cute. Well, that is a big, that it is a larger mutt. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't do that on purpose, did they? No. Uh, <laughs> He's smiling wow. at you. <laughs> How do you transition out of that to traffic? Yeah. I, I, Sam, I, take it away. Yeah. Yeah, take it away, <laughs> Samuel. Go. That's it. There's no transition. You just, just pull the band-aid off, go right to it. Let's go. Him, so. <laughs> Samuel King. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Great event. Uh, we had a couple of <laughs> crashes here, but they have been <laughs> cleared. We had one here at uh, Loop 410 at Seguin Road and on 281. But again, they are both off of the board at this point. You drive in on 281 once you get inside 1604 this morning. 12 minutes each way between. 1604 in downtown. Uh, Fredericksburg Road, we had some delays earlier and we still do down toward uh, Woodlawn. So now down to up to 16 minutes uh, southbound on Fredericksburg Road near the Medical Center area, 12 minutes uh, going northbound. And here's a look at Transguide 35 at Evans flowing well this morning, as all our jokes. Thank you, yeah. Samuel. <laughs> and some people are like, you guys laugh and giggle too much. Well, you know what? Yeah. One, it's early. It Two, is early. We're it's among early. friends. And if you don't think that slogan is funny, you can switch channels now. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> so there are plenty of other stations to watch, but I like big mutts and I cannot lie. That's just priceless. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Hats off to the person that came up with that one. Yeah, yeah. it was All cute. Right. Uh, beautiful view. I love this. Uh, Case that connect picture, the flag. But we were getting a workout yesterday and the next couple of days with the windy conditions out there. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for that one. And temperatures, you know, we've been talking about how it feels very spring like. The normal temperatures for this date, the 30 year average, 72 and 50. Today, forecast 80 and 64. 64 this morning, well, at least the actual temperature should say, that's the normal low temperature for May the 4th. And 80, the forecast high, is the normal. Uh, low temperature, I beg your pardon, I should have put in there April the 11th, 411. So, uh, yeah, we are way ahead as far as normals are concerned. Uh, that's going to be changing, though, once we get into the latter part of the weekend. Here's a look at uh, live cam right now, and we do have a lot of good visibility, but a lot of clouds out there, and we're just going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the next couple of days. You know, if there's a peak of sunshine, great. I saw a couple little bright spots here and there yesterday, but 
it clouded right back over. Once we get into tomorrow, we are going to continue with all the moisture coming in here. We'll probably have a couple of, uh, as we call them, streamer showers, just little sprinkly showers, nothing more than a nuisance rain, if that. And so you may have a slow go on the uh, commute tomorrow morning. Then uh, Friday, the same situation, a little bit better chance for some a uh, couple of showers on Friday, Saturday, an even better shot at some rain starting off the day and maybe a few scattered showers throughout the day. But then we go into Saturday evening and that's when the best chance of rain is going to be moving on in here. We've got a front moving through and it is going to be somewhat of a um, kind of a clash of the air masses. Warm, humid air out ahead of it and drier, slightly cooler air in behind. And so we may actually see uh, a couple of uh, decent thunderstorms late Saturday night into early Sunday morning. That will continue to push on out and that'll be through about noon Sunday and then we're going to start to clear out somewhat and uh, slightly cooler temperatures come on in here. Once we get into Sunday, it'll be lower in the high temperatures, almost normal, and then a little bit, a uh, little bit closer to normal starting off next week. 75 degrees today at noon, cloudy, and again, it's just going to stay breezy, call it windy all day long. 80, plenty of humidity out there today, lots of clouds. If you see a peak of sunshine, Fantastic 65 tomorrow again well above normal same thing in the afternoon same thing on Friday a couple of sprinkly showers better chance of rain early on Saturday and then going into Sunday we do have the the best chance of rain Saturday night into Sunday showers a couple of thunderstorms and then getting closer to normal temperatures starting off next week not too bad we'll take it Mike thank you Mike you're wanting to say that thing again right? yeah a little bit 649 about 64 degrees and post workout recovery is essential but what do you what you do after working out may stunt your muscle growth tomorrow on GMSA we're going to share the do's and don'ts of exercising outside with live cam on your hump day here it, yeah it's a little muggy out there we've already talked about that we're going to get an update on the morning commute some of you are about to head into town we'll see how traffic times are looking coming up. In this morning's GMA first look, the push to create vaccine passports. U.S. Airlines asking the White House to develop federal guidance for temporary health credentials that would help keep track of travelers' negative COVID tests and proof of vaccination. It's really just using your phone in, in a way that we hope will simplify things for the government and for the passengers. While the airlines do not want vaccines mandated for travel, they hope the digital health pass will allow people to avoid domestic and international quarantine requirements. I know the state of Hawaii is considering just that. Um, if you're able to show you have uh, the test and the vaccine, they're going to eliminate the quarantine. And so we definitely think that is one of the main benefits. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll show you how other countries are already using this vaccine passport technology. With your GME First Look, I'm Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. One mistake has cost two men their lives. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. It seems the driver of a car missed a turn on this access road, causing that deadly crash overnight. Both the driver and a passenger in his car were killed. Police say their car was heading east on Hausman Road when the driver failed to turn as he reached the access road. The car launched onto Interstate 10, where it hit the median, killing the two men who were both in their 20s. Police believe that speed was a factor in this crash. They spent several hours out here investigating with the highway lane shut down. Well, they reopened the highway just before 5 o'clock this morning. Those men who were killed, uh, we are still waiting to find out their identities. But again, police do say that they are both in their 20s. And we're still waiting to find out whether perhaps they may be students from UTSA, which is just right around the corner. Reporting from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. If you own a business here in Texas and want more clarification on the mask mandate ending, you can participate in a statewide town hall later this morning. Texas Workforce Commission and the governor's office will host the town hall at 1145 this morning. The state agencies say they want to help offer guidance through this transition. We'll live stream the hour-long town hall on KSAT.com. 
And if you just heard Katrina Weber, we had a major accident this morning. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King to see how things are looking now. Well, things are looking uh, much better now. If we had a pretty uh, busy morning with crashes, I-10 is clear. Uh, but we do want to remind you of this uh, ramp closure coming up at around 9 o'clock today. So in just a couple of hours, the eastbound ramp at Dominion Drive. Uh, looking at travel times, looking good from I-10 coming in from Bernie, 24 minutes into downtown San Antonio, 30 minutes from Seguin, 27 minutes on 35 from uh, New Braunfels. And here's a look at 281 at uh, Loop 410. Traffic flowing very smoothly this morning, Mike. Lots of humidity. Thank you, sir. Lots of windy conditions. Both hands on the wheel today and plenty of clouds out there. We don't have to deal with any fog, but uh, the wind out of the south about 10, 15 miles per hour. Gusts close to 30. It's going to stay windy all day long. Temperatures are more like what they should be in May and we'll be up to 75 at noon. 80 high temperature, plenty of clouds, breezy and windy. And then a couple of sprinkly showers maybe tomorrow morning, Friday morning. Better chance of rain, especially late Saturday into Sunday. Well, we hope we started your day with a smile. <laughs> yes, we do. Have a great day and we'll see you back here at nine.